Just a quick word from editing Octane in front of your video today to say that this 100% is more of a casual video than usual. Really just here to talk about LEGO Zelda design and how design can be interpreted differently. So my apologies if this feels like a waste of an upload to you, but given that I have a CSS, I needed to sit down and talk about the differences in approach. So I'm sorry, this one is for me. Most importantly, the following video is in no way a claim to credit for myself. In fact, I believe all designs and sort of creative choices that were featured in the official set are leagues better than my own, nor am I claiming that the ideas that were seen in the set were mine or I am responsible for them. LEGO doesn't copy fans, period. This is just an interesting comparison given my history with the LEGO Zelda brand for someone whose the whole thing is making mocks in the styles of sets. So for those of you still interested, I hope you enjoy the video and for the rest of you, I'll see you next Friday. Good morning everybody and welcome back to a video with this wonderful little pedestal build of course from the original set set 70092 but I've souped it up a little uh, because today as you saw on the thumbnail it's about time we compare it to this and answer the question of um, how they are different to each other. So for those of you who don't know, this here is Z0009, uh, one of my custom sets that I made back in wave one. And what I wanna go through today is talking about how this is obviously different from this model, but some of the other things in the CSS that we've done and predicted and see how accurate my predictions were that include stuff like this, because um, I designed these mushrooms back in um, in wave three, I believe, in Yigi Clan Attacks. But we're going to take a look at these two together and with my expanded pedestal, which I haven't shown you guys, you'll get to see that later on. Uh, and then just talk through the figures as well, because all four of these figures, including these two off to the side, um, are ones that I've designed in the showcase. So we're just going to take a look through and see what things um, I did differently. Uh, and that is the main focus here, is to see what things were done differently. Because like, look at this model. This is, ignore the figures, of course. This is very clearly inferior. I mean, it's completely completely different color palette. It's a completely different kind of style. Um, and this definitely isn't about me going, haha, I did it first or haha, I did it better because no, no none of these figures, um, yes, I mean, these two don't exist. None of these figures, none of these builds, none of it is better than what they came up with officially over here. Um, so we want to make that clear before we get started. But I do think it's an interesting discussion to have, especially when it comes down to stuff like these Korok designs, which of course we did very, very differently in the CSS. So let's start by taking a look at the two of these. So I'm going to move some of these figures out of the way. By the way, um, these are my Purest Tears of the Kingdom, Link and Breath of the Wild uh, ceremonial gear Zelda. And you can see here that I'm actually using my second copy. Like, she's still fine down here. Uh, my second copy of hair and head uh, that I got off eBay um, to enhance this purist figure who I think looks much better now and while I still would like to find a purist alternative because I don't love the print here this is one of my few remaining uh, stickered figures uh, I do really like how the hair upgrades I still wish it was blonde but that's besides the point so let's just move her out of the way uh, and of course we've got Archaic Link as well who's not using any upgraded parts although he should be um, in fact I've used them on another figure yeah, I used them on this one here, uh, which is our Sheikah shorts from Breath of the Wild as well. So he's just got a bow here, but this is his like Shrine of Resurrection look. And you can see, uh, so there's my second Link as well, because I bought a second copy of Bag 3 and 4 off eBay. Uh, my second Master Sword is currently with my boy, my baby, SS Link, who's still at the wrong college, dual molded arms, but that's besides the point. Anyway, tangent over, tangent over. Uh, let's actually take a look at these builds up close. So... Firstly, the big difference here is that how the sets were designed. Now, what's really interesting to me, at least, is that I kind of, well, not predicted, but I knew that this was a key part of iconography in this series, uh, enough to the point that I was confident it would come in Wave 1. So for those of you that don't remember or weren't around, uh, Wave 1 of custom sets was something I designed back in 2020 and featured 11 sets that uh, predicted if or predicted or estimated what kind of concepts or things we could see uh, if LEGO made Legend of Zelda play sets, specifically under the conditions that they started with Legend of Zelda play sets. Obviously, I don't think I would have called them starting with a huge, massive uh, tree diorama. So um, we're, we're forgive me there. But yeah, so if play sets had come, what would you have seen? And interestingly enough, this was the gift we've purchased for the wave, meaning it wasn't actually a full release set. It was uh, like what happened with LEGO Mario, where you got that poly bag um, and the Monty Mole set. It, it would be on launch. So if you pre-ordered uh, the main set, so like maybe Dungeon Builders or showed up in the first couple of days of release, you would get this set here, which you should be seeing this box art on screen. Um, and it would include this pedestal here, which of course had another sword, because that's another really interesting thing about this model, is I didn't believe that we would ever get a molded master sword, or at least it didn't back in 2020. You've got to remember, um, when I designed this, this was still before the Sword of Gryffindor even got its mold. So it was kind of unprecedented to see specialist swords that were based off uh, unique iconography. So, um, of course, we worked out this. Um, but yeah, 
This was a gift of purchase kind of styled set, so it came, uh, it would have limited availability uh, because it was iconic, so it'd be perfect choice for it. Uh, and you can see most of the things are brick built, so you've still got the triangle with, of course, the other little ones here, and then the three little lumps around it, and we'll compare that to that in a second. Uh, a load of silent princesses, and it did actually come with a figure. It wasn't this Zelda here. It was this hair, this head, um, and then it came with the white praying dress, who unfortunately I don't have on hand. What I find interesting about that is the alternate face. Of course, this is as if she was praying or putting the sword back in the pedestal, which is the scene that my um, one down there is based off. It's that final memory from Breath of the Wild where she puts the sword away. She wouldn't have had this heart, uh, which again is another one of my prints, but uh, sorry, these guys have just come off my display. Um, but I thought it was interesting that um, that was the case nonetheless. Um, my version though did not use this hair piece because I didn't know we were gonna do a special hair piece. And a lot of the goals in wave one were in trying to keep costs down uh, and new molds limited for the stuff that really needed it. Because remember I had 11 play sets to fill with new molds um, and mister certainly was taking up at least two of them with both this and um, his hat mold and then there was a wolf link and anyway all kinds of things it's besides the point um so I just used the Phoebe hair actually which I can show you guys now so switching that out just to give you guys an idea is the figure would have looked more like this of course still the wrong outfit but that is the hair piece and then of course with our official printed face which takes her likeness the other big funny thing about the figure included in this set of course was this back when I was still designing with bug eyes I don't think this is a particularly fair comparison as as we see when we take a look at the officials uh, I did go back later and change it to a more official style but let's not talk about figures now we're here to talk about uh, Z009 and the official master sword pedestal uh, I think so because it was a gift for purchase, obviously the piece count was definitely kept lower, although I still knew I wanted to have a place to put a sword in the stone. And you can see we've used completely different techniques here. So mine is not an, not strictly illegal, no bricks are being stressed, but if you push this sword in too far, it becomes illegal. So it's not illegal to have it just like resting there, but of course that means it wobbles to the side. So yeah, basically an illegal technique where you push it between these, but that is because uh, at the time I was definitely less familiar with snot and um, I didn't want this middle section here to raise up too much which is something that they do not particularly mind on the official model here don't mind the extra Koroks and things going on we'll remove those later um, well you can see here that the sword sits much deeper and has a much more raised up thing uh, at the loss of the triangle iconography which admittedly isn't actually in Breath of the Wild um, but I still wanted it on here so in some ways this pedestal is laughably inaccurate and actually more akin to something say from Link to the Past um, or even Twilight Princess, to be honest, with its kind of rundown aesthetic. Again, the other big difference here is the color. If we bring them both into shot, you can see that I went for your greys palette and you went for the tan. Tan is 100% the right color and the accurate color to uh, the game one. However, lighting in Coral Forest definitely kind of shift these things around. So I don't think the gray is inaccurate. So to be honest, I think what we should probably do is just uh, take all these off. Maybe we should keep them on dead just for colour uh, and bring in some of these here. Uh, and maybe we can give this thing a new lease of life as a classic game pedestal instead. Um, so let's just add a bomb flower as well. I know you wouldn't find those in the loft woods, but yeah, you could even add some of these silent princesses back in just for a bit of colour. But turn this into more of a link to the pasty. Uh, kind of pedestal instead because yeah this is just completely superior. It's also interesting how of course the tree necessitated that this has a black base. Um, I don't know if we can really call this a difference in design because it just wasn't something that was necessary for this whereas I went for the freeform structure which is of course used by stacking plates and I should mention there are instructions over on Rebrickable for this one which I believe are free but like I don't know why you'd want this one when there's that one but it is still interesting to make this comparison especially considering at the end of the day I did... <laughs> Again, I don't want to use the word predict because predict implies that I had influence or knowledge over what would be included. I just, I had the the sight, no, that's still not quite the right word. Um, I more so had the sense, I guess, to predict that this is a super iconic thing that would be included in an early on set, which is really my only, not even claim to fame, but my only real similarity here. The only thing I predicted is that uh, an early on set would feature these guys, specifically, of course, these um, two were both featured in Wave 1, her and the CMF and him and Guardian Attack. Uh, also, Child Link was featured in my Wave 1 as well, um, but Adult Link was not. So those three also appeared in Wave 1. But no, really, my, my claim is that I knew that this was an iconic moment that would be transferred into LEGO very early on. I saw it as a promo, and to be honest, the way that this detaches, 
almost gives similarity to that, which I think is really, really interesting, but um, also not related. It makes so much more sense to have it with the tree. Uh, and we've got to talk about how much more lush this is. Now, obviously, as I've demonstrated, you can add more things to this to make this lush, like um, we're using the Mario leaf here with the uh, heart elements that came on that Christmas tree. And we've got our sign of princesses and I think that was absolutely fine for this, but this is going for a completely different thing. Of course, using the tan and we've got all this moss layered up, it really makes it feel more like a, an adult style build. Now, admittedly, I'm doing this thing favors right now because I've attached um, extra bean stalks. Uh, I've actually got two extra Koroks on here, um, Mister over here, and the one with the balloon. So I am upping the ante ever so slightly, uh, but that's besides the point because yeah, I've added some birds as well. Um, but yeah, and no, then you can take Hester off as well. But yeah, this is just so more iconic. I mean, the sword makes it go a huge, huge way as well, doesn't it? Uh, the other thing, of course, on here is it is kind of a different dimension. If I hold them up side by side, you can see this is more of a, ooh, um, it's a 45 degree, 45 degree and 45 degree angle triangle. So it's not actually a proper one, is it? I mean, mm, this is equilateral. This is some other shape that I'm not doing the math slide on camera. Anyway, point being is the triangle is a different shape. And this one here, of course, includes the gap around here, which is something that in my review I said I don't like. And I still stand by it. I appreciate that the it's here, but I think it should have been so much more shallow or they should have had um, a consistent color going around the inside. Now, I realize that would have been hard because then it would have poked out the edges, but it's just too big, too deep and kind of looks bad from that perspective. Also, the use of a snot technique is what makes this sword pulling feature even possible, which I think is really, really amazing. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, my lumpy bits were, were considerably larger and, and differently scaled, mostly because I was going for a brick girl approach and I thought these would feel too small initially, but I actually really like how they've turned out. The inclusion of the fern element, which again was something that was not around when I designed this back in 2020, uh, also goes a long way to increasing that, that kind of foliage and, and just the use of multicolors and the, the sort of focus on the water really does make this feel more like an older classic game um, pedestal instead, which I think is, is interesting. Um, and then beyond that, uh, something that they're both missing is the seven stage or six stage stones that are around, which I'll actually show in a second because I've included them on my expanded version. As for steps around the front, uh, mine uses an interesting snot technique over here uh, to create sort of a layered effect, whereas this one just goes for the standard steps and is much, much cleaner, which I like. Of course, we've got silent princesses on both versions. Actually, let's rip this one off and show you guys because this is another point of not controversy uh, for me, but something I disagree with. Um, I absolutely love the recolor of this five stem piece into aqua. I think that's absolutely perfect for the silent princess. But before this, because this piece is a new recolor, we were stuck with solutions like this, which weren't great. Um, but sticking them into this leaf is perfect and actually again something that we'll see is Breath of the Wild Zelda's accessory in the second CMF series. However I fundamentally disagree with this being olive green again just to, to ruin my video for later. Um, here it is with bright green this is my own idea. Um, I like that color combination so much more but we'll come back to her we're getting to her I promise um, but yeah that's another key difference as well but I still think it's interesting to put the two of them side by side. Just before we move on to the expanded pedestal I thought I'd just bring in this thing here because it has a couple more details that were recreated either in my model or elsewhere. Uh, we've seen a hook shot uh, in Wave 4's uh, Gerudo Fortress. Uh, pretty similar build actually. Again, I'm not trying to claim credit for any of these. I just think the similarities to CSS stuff is interesting because it shows how uh, I attempt to understand things and how it will, well, hopefully it won't influence decision making going forward at all, but um, you never know. Uh, we also have these two, of course, Highland Shield was another one I never believed would get a new mold. I'm so glad it did. I specifically, I love, love, love the bevel, which is great. Uh, and here we have the, the red potion as well. I don't believe we ever did a specifically a red potion, but I have featured potions using this bottle design. I always put a, a cork in it, thinking the Wind Waker style, but, um, but yeah, no, another aspect that is similar across various versions. One thing I never thought to include was the compass though, of course, um, this compass print that's included in this set and that's just genius. So uh, I really like that, uh, having that dungeon item in here as well, which is why I would have liked something along the lines of a key too. As I mentioned earlier, small details like these Hylian shrooms also featured in Wave 3's Yiga Clan attacks. It's an interesting point to bring up just because again, the design was completely different. In fact, my design was basically just this part, except for instead of using this header, I was using uh, the ooh, the BB9E head, uh, also in orange, which is obviously, I don't think it's even in production anymore, but this cap looks much more accurate, so I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. Um, I think it looks absolutely great. Um, and then we also have the Traveler's Shield, which again is printed on here, looks absolutely perfect because of it. I believe one of my versions did this, but I also know at one point I had it on a two by two dish 
in um, the waiter tray piece, which is the other way of doing it, which I guess is um, it's interesting. Uh, and just for comparison's sake, another piece I never actually featured was uh, the ocarina. It's never come in a custom set. I never planned it to come in a custom set, which I suppose is ignorance on my part, um, which is really interesting. Bombs also make a similar comparison. Uh, these appear in a couple of custom sets. It sort of depends what game you're trying to make them off of. I believe these are the ocarina ones. I would never have chosen this angled piece because to me, it looks like too much of a bottle, but also I think it does really, really work. The only thing I, that I think lets this down is when a figure holds it by the stem, it kind of looks like they're dragging like a bag or something around, which doesn't look particularly good, but that's sort of besides the point. Uh, and something that also doesn't have a direct com uh, comparison, but I do think is interesting, is the Gossip Stone. Never got around to doing a Gossip Stone. This design is actually very uh, similar to Artem Zayatev's uh, 10K submission one. Uh, which appeared in his set there. So that's really interesting. Again, there's no accusations of copying here. I just think it's interesting to compare these things. Uh, the closest we got to this in the CSS is actually recently in the Temple of Time. They were supposed to appear, uh, but instead we got the Hint Stone from Ocarina of Time 3D, which is obviously in family. Uh, but, well, this is a more accurate scale. That one was considerably huge. So that um, Mr. Young Link here, who was also in that set, uh, could stick his head inside it. But then again, completely different models. So that's besides the point. Let's uh, take then a look at this next to my expanded pedestal, uh, and then I'll show you things like the Koroks and figures compared to the set. This version here of the pedestal, which may feature in a future video, but might not, but it is the same pedestal we just took a look at. Uh, so compared to my version, it is, it is almost identical uh, comparison-wise, but um, it's obviously been much larger. So this is using uh, the expanded parts from another copy of the set. So specifically bags three and four, uh, I've doubled the size of my pedestal. So just using those two bags, I bought bag three and four off an eBay listing, uh, which obviously gave me second figures, which I really wanted, but also a couple more options to play around here. Um, so obviously now it is completely sizably different, even compared to the obviously original comparison, this one was bigger, but now it's even uh, more so dwarfing it entirely. I've actually kept the pedestal uh, built the same, adding uh, detail that I thought would have been cute in the original, uh, which is uh, these six stones around here for the six sages. Um, all represented again using the leftover parts from my second copy of the set. But then, yeah, it's just more mushrooms and more princesses and ferns and stuff. So really useful. I'm glad to have a second copy because, of course, when you get those two bags, you don't get the big plates. You can't do anything major because you don't have that large plate network. But uh, I still wanted to show you the two of them next to each other before we compare some figures because I thought it was interesting to see how a, how a scaled up version difference is. But no need to go over the detailed comparison again because we just did that when we looked at the two normal versions. So, yeah. Yeah, just has to do here more space. Let me give you a new angle. Really added to the depth. And um, yeah, cool. Let's take a look at those figures now. So we're going to start off the figure section by talking about this one here, mostly because here's the significance to the CSS being one of the first figures that I drew. Oh, isn't that horrible? Uh, but quickly, of course, she also became the first 3D figure that we drew. Uh, and then as well was the second figure to be remastered in this updated style, which happened to all of CMF Series 1. And all that time, she didn't use this hair. <laughs> um, now, as I already mentioned earlier, that was for cuss cutting measures to limit molds for people that I felt really needed them because I feel that because every Hylian has ears, um, only some of them will ever get them because they can't add ears to all of your just generic NPCs because that will, will waste a lot of time. Now, obviously, even with the upgrades, this figure is far from perfect. You can see by who is going to be on your screen the entire time that there are many things that are the same, but also many things that are different. Firstly, no Sheikah Slate on this version, so we'll take this out, although it is worth noting that this 1x2 print uh, did appear later on uh, Robbie and I believe in the advent calendar and then I believe again in like look at landing anyway it's uh, appeared in multiple different sets um, and it is also on a one by two tile so it's another thing that I sort of assumed rightly would be how they do it um, in in the style uh, in the Lego style but then that leaves us with her like this who is exactly um, basically the same as my drawing <laughs> well not quite first thing I think I actually want to point out is if I lift this out of the way if we take a look at the lower down on the torso so you can see that my lines decided to come a lot further down. I really like the asymmetry of the belt, which comes sort of across the hips and down here on my version, whether it's here, we're just left with this big printing gap followed by the, the pleats of the shirt. Now this one doesn't look too small, but um, 
one thing it does do is, is sort of feel short in comparison at least. I feel it could have come down onto the legs, but currently uh, these are unprinted, meaning that that was saving them budget. So that's absolutely fine. Obviously with my figures, because they're 2D, you don't get to see the back. And sometimes I do alternate faces, but usually we have to look to other variants of the characters where I've drawn them again uh, in order to see that. And in this case, there is no proof anywhere of me giving her a second face, although I'd like to think that I would have because that's really, really smart, but I doubt it. Um, but yeah, she just has a fairly normal facial expression. Mine looks a little bit more mad as if she's been followed, whether this is much more in the likeness of the character and karma. That being said, her upgraded version, not her original, uh, actually does have a much more Lego-like face, which is interesting. You can see here that I've recreated that silent princess that she's holding pretty much perfectly. Now, again, my version has printing for some weird reason, but regardless, here we have the aqua in that plant element, exactly how it appears on the image, which is interesting. Uh, and if we take that away, let's take a look at the arms. Uh, now, the arms are dual molded on both figures. However, my wand figure's printing, which is just a little bit much, to be honest, uh, and generally doesn't get done. So most of my figures should really be avoiding arm printing because it's just not realistic. However, uh, everyone has dual molded arms in this set, but nobody has printing. So it's an interesting comparison. And once again, the hands are plain. That seems irrelevant now, but it will come relevant when we talk to the other characters. Uh, if we compare the legs as well, uh, we've got black and brown here, whereas my version was dark brown and um, and then reddish brown on the feet. I like this more for higher contrast because Zelda's sort of like trousers, whatever you want to call them, uh, do sort of sit halfway between dark brown and black. So I think black's actually the closer match. And as I said, it adds more contrast. Now, what the biggest difference here is, of course, um, on the torso printing, uh, although they feature the same design, firstly, they use metallic gold, which is a much better fit than the uh, flame yellowish orange or keto orange, whatever you want to call it, that um, I used on mine. I like the gold better uh, and I like the way it shimmers. And I really like the fact that they used a, um, a shiny silver accent that we've talked about before um, for the line work on the torso. That being said, the hip definition is a problem here for me. Um, I think even if it was a dark color or anything, it would have gone a long way. And I actually really like how that looks on the figure uh, that I made as well, which I think is um, an interesting point. But everything else just again looks better here. Although she is one of the figures I am most proud of drawing. And I still think she's recognizable in my version. This is just another fantastic figure. The other, of course, big difference is the hair color. This mold is, is perfect, by the way. I really love how it swoops over the back. Just something, again, I don't get to do very often. One, because I'm using Using existing um, uh, parts, but also because I don't uh, often uh, do photos of the back. That being said, um, they've chosen the flame yellowish orange color here, which ironically I use for my highlights, and then um, not choosing blonde. I personally think blonde is a closer fit, uh, especially because it provides contrast when compared to the ocarina figs, um, who definitely are that color. But um, yeah, so no, that is the figure in comparison to my version. My version is severely inferior. However, pretty much every aspect of the design language, excluding the um, specialized hair mold, are identical, which again is what you're looking for. Again, this is not about claiming credit. That's just saying that I, yeah, this is how a figure I would have expected to look like with all the accessories, all the trappings, Trappings. Um, the only weird thing being, of course, the hip printing, and I'm so glad that they gave her a molded hair piece. And um, we've got a Silent Princess, and they even gave her a Sheikah Slate, which is great. Uh, this is a CMF figure, easily. Like, I know I include it in my CMF, but like, look at this figure. Like, this could very much easily be a here in a blind box, you can get this figure. Like, it's of that quality. So, again, I like that because it shows that in another reality where playsets did come, maybe she was in the CMF series or a version of Zelda, because I do believe a version of Zelda and a version of Link and a version of Ganon would have had to have been in that first CMF series if it had happened. Obviously, it didn't, but um, you never know if we ever see a Zelda CMF. Obviously, they won't do it now because that would be kind of questionable but um yeah i do believe she's of cmf quality so another thing that in alternate universe um i sort of have a half prediction may come true that let's put her down out of the way uh, and bring in our counterpart this is of course the breath of the wild link once again we're going to remove a couple of things firstly the traveler's shield it's a lovely print as i mentioned it did appear in the hyrule castle gatehouse but not relevant for today uh, instead, we are going to actually leave his um, Traveler's Broadsword on here because we can match the pose a little bit. I know this sword in the picture is dual molded. Don't know what I was doing there. Again, remember, I wasn't allowing Master Swords, so this is literally just a recolored version of the Tawny Sword at the time. Um, but yeah, no, again, this is the same posture as the figure. 
Now, one thing I did do back from wave one, and the reason we started with her is because the figure quality was a lot better. The Breath of the Wild Link was in desperate need of a remaster, but once this set was announced, there was no point in doing it. So um, he never got, got done in a sense, although I will have to do him before his next appearance in a set. Anyway, um, point being, if we have a look, one thing that we both did was the molded hair piece. I knew that there was no piece that was suitable for recreating his hairstyle, and it did recreate a... Um, uh, would require a new mold, which has obviously had much use across the many waves of custom sets. So I believe it was a worthy investment. I think interestingly, and again, you can't retell really from this picture. So let me bring up one of the newer variations as I've really tried to show that the th line thickness on the um, curly bits wouldn't be so pointy. And that's obviously just because the Lego doesn't make them that thin. So you have to have those rounded edges and those um, curves to it so that it's actually more like what the official piece would look like. So um, yeah, and then you've got, of course, got the fringe coming over a little less swept than mine. And no, uh, you've almost got the sticky up bit as well, which is something I featured on mine. It doesn't come up, but it does go across and you have that depth there, which is very cool. The big difference, of course, is the color. I switch between medium nougat and dark tan whenever I feel like, well, no, depending on the game, Breath of the Wild, medium nougat, Tears of the Kingdom, dark tan, uh, Scarlet Sword, dark tan, um, and so on. Um, and they chose pearl gold, which is actually a really, really nice color. Now, if this was old pearl gold, this would not have worked because it would have been all mottled and shiny here, but it, it's actually quite matte. It isn't super reflective on the light. And the reason this works is because they've like added new pearl gold colors, like with the sets like C3PO and so on. Anyway, point being um, is the hair piece again, something I called that they would need um, and looks really, really phenomenal. If we take a look at the face, obviously this version of Link, um, I've drawn Link a lot, so. <laughs> Uh, this first version is using the bug eyes. However, of course, this was not a standard I kept. You can see that pretty much everyone after this um, uses standard eyes, just like a normal facial expression. Nothing special, doesn't particularly capture his likeness. I believe this face here, this front one, captures Uti Link really, really well, Uti Adam Link, but it's a little harsh uh, for my taste when it comes to Breath of the Wild Link. But that's besides the point. We're not here to review the figures, we're here to compare them. Now the Hyar expression is something we are familiar with because uh, I've drawn this on a variety of characters. I've also drawn like nervous expressions and happy expressions and so on, pretty much everything for him. Uh, but we do have this screaming expression, which again is just iconic to the character. Again, it looks so much like him here. This is fantastic for Breath of the Wild Link, by the way, when he is screaming. Um, yeah, just a better job than I could ever have done. Really nice dual molded face that really does look like him in both. This also does look like him. It's just like another variant of him. Uh, torso wise, all the details are here. They chose to print the uh, belt buckle on the belt, which is absolutely fine. Uh, it's a fair choice. It was just a matter of like deciding which they were going to do it when I did the figures. But then again, um, it, unlike Breath of the Wild, though, they actually did bring the tunic down almost to the knees like I did, which I think is really, really interesting. Uh, we have the down strap here, which I had more shaped on mine. And you also have the diagonal one. All three of my straps are in dark brown, but I'm going to put that down to me being an idiot back in 2020 rather than anything. I actually like the color contrast of having the reddish browns and then dark brown. I did predict it for this one. Uh, and they also brought their sword along right down the torso, which I did on this variation and then would correct and change to a shorter sword in other variations, which is less accurate. So this is one where the um, original version wins. Uh, we also have the undershirt, which again is a lot less visible on this version, but again, I was still learning the ropes at this point, so that's regardless of the point. Uh, and then for dual molded um, arms, they're exactly the same, right? We've got the dark azure and then the white. I would have liked to see some asymmetry. Again, we're not talking about reviewing the figures here, but my version uses um, an actual dual molded of the lime color. No, sorry, spring yellowish green on bottom half, blue on the top with a bit of white printing over the blue uh, to recreate sort of the van brace. And I know I've only done it on one arm, but you could have done it on both. And I just think it would have had an extra bit of pop, uh, something that my version has anyway. But regardless, this is a fantastic figure and of course has great black printing too. Uh, I've seen people talk about the legs specifically, of course, that there is no side leg printing. But again, this is pretty uncommon, although somebody got it. Um, troublemaker over here, potentially the best figure in the set. Um, and I just did mine all in blue, which I realize isn't accurate either, but I think this is an interesting middle ground, but it works, it's fine. Uh, the color choices is interesting as well. They've gone with uh, tan and medium nougat for Hylian trousers. Yeah, I'm happy with this. Uh, a lot of people would have said reddish brown. I picked reddish brown for my shoes. Again, really weird. Again, I'm gonna put that down to me being an idiot. I think um, if I'd done this figure from scratch like a year ago, I would have done uh, dual molded boots and then just shrunk the, uh, the, the thing a little, which of course makes the trousers look a little bit small. So I can see why, although I complained about it, they did, um, they did shrink as I'll just torso down a little bit, which is interesting. 
Um, tan being the color for the trousers is absolutely right. It's the medium nougat that's controversial, but yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I think it does a, a job really, really well. And again, in this original wave one set, so again, both of these guys featured in wave one, like I predicted, and since they're in the first set, they're in the first wave, they're here because they're super iconic, of course. Um, and yeah, again, another one that looks great and I'm so, so glad to have. It's a shame we never got a figure upgrade so I could actually show you decent artwork. You're just gonna have to live with um, shiny Scarlet Sword Link and hope that we get him one day. We also have uh, the classic games. Uh, we're actually going to put Adam to the side because he did not appear in Wave 1. The third figure of mine that did appear in Wave 1 was uh, Classic Game Link. Now, the biggest thing to address here is, again, my mold requirements. Because I had my limited molds, um, it meant that I was not creating a new hairpiece for Ocarina Link. Instead, I was using the same one that I used on Skyward Sword Twilight Princess uh, just because it was sort of supposed to be the same. Now, this original version of the figure got updated in wave three and four and he lost a lot, of, fortunately I lost a lot of his detail, but he was still using that hair mold because I just do not believe that they would make seven different molds with seven different links. Even though now I realize that you could use this one for Ocarina and Majora's and then you'd need a unique one for Toon and then you'd need a unique one for SS and TP, which slightly worries me that we'll never get any TP SS sets because it require a new mold. Same with Wind Waker, I guess, but you know, time will tell. Um, and of course, because this was a new mold that I developed for his hat hair combo, even if it was the wrong hat hair, combo it does have the ears uh interestingly i chose blonde there again i think this is one set where this the case where my color is less accurate than the set so i'm happy with that and then everything else is in uh bright green which is great now my skirt was printed on they've used the troll skirt piece again i don't think the troll skirt piece was actually out when i designed this figure back in 2020 if so it was it was just new and we didn't really know how it was going to work um, and instead he's got 3k short molded short legs whereas i went with mid legs because i wanted mine to be posable for play sets because he came in goma's lair if you want instructions for goma go check out rebrickable.com uh, as far as accessories go we have an unrecolored short sword yep pretty much could have called that uh, and then a deck of shield again printed on an existing shield and not uh, brand new in a sense so yeah again that made a lot of sense they were never going to do a new mold for deck of shield looking at the printing we've got the uh, strap across the, the front now, one thing I find interesting about that is that they have emphasized the shadow on this one, something I also did, at least in the remastered version, between brown and dark brown, or is that medium nougat and brown, or is that dark orange and brown? I'm not really sure. Either way, um, the colors of the two belts are different, with the bottom one here having that dark red tone to it, which is not something I replicated. Now, interestingly enough, because I gave my mid legs, my belt was on uh, the leg piece, which is not something they did because they had the skirt and the short legs, so they couldn't have. But um, if they'd done mid legs, I wonder where they would put that belt. It's just another interesting thing. No crease lines, which I think is interesting because a lot of figures like to have those. And again, he's got the molds. I don't know why those arms aren't dual molded because they just have super short sleeves on my version, but here they are dual molded and this is the right call. Uh, and again, he has a happy expression and a stern expression, which are again, perfect for him. The happy one matches what I did, but again, just looks better because I can't draw. Um, and then everything else is, is exactly the same, which is great. Now in various sets, he's come with his slingshot. The slingshot was actually included in the Deku tree. So again, I kind of called that because we had a set that featured him and a slingshot. Although mine featured rooms inside the tree, it technically featured the tree. I was, I made a good dungeon pick. You know what? I'm not crazy. Maybe, maybe I was onto something. That's technically two sets I predicted correctly when I was going for play sets and they were going for display. I'll leave that one up to you guys in the comments. It's still interesting to me. Uh, and then of course we have our, our adult ocarina time link. I'm just going to remove, sorry, I've got my Deku nut in his hand. And of course the ocarina we've already mentioned, we don't actually have any use for. It's never appeared in the CSS. So this version of link actually took until wave three to come into fruition. And then he would be reused in wave four as well uh, in the recent Temple of Time set, but also in um, his original appearance in wave three, which was in the Lon Lon Ranch set, I believe as well. And again, he unfortunately uses the same hair mold um, as Child Link did in the Gomez set. That's just because, again, I was using the same hairpiece for all of them to keep mold costs down, because believe it or not, when you're doing Zelda play sets, there are so many other important things that need new molds, specifically for races and all these other things, so I wasn't going to make a new one. Although, Lego, if you're going to make other links from other games, you need a new hairpiece. You can't use this. You cannot use this on Twilight Princess or Skyward Sword. Uh, he shares the same head, head element as uh, Breath of the Wild Link, which suits him incredibly well. The Hyar also suits him really well, but I feel this is more of a Breath of the Wild face and this is more of an Ocarina face. But again, we've been over this. So I got the fact that they would have a molded hairpiece with ears, exactly the same as the other. Uh, interestingly enough, I chose not to give him gauntlets. Uh, actually, I didn't bring that up with Breath of the Wild Link, but Breath of the Wild Link, they chose to give skin hands to. It makes sense because his gauntlets are more on his arms and they only come up to like halfway up his fingers and never going to print on hands. 
Whether it's here, uh, the gauntlets, and then later, of course, the silver and golden gauntlets are much more sort of over his his hands and fists. So it makes sense that they're brown gloved here. Again, still in the bright green colour, still with the dual models with no printing, which is what I did. You've still got the two uh, belts as well uh, with the opening at the top, although mine is significantly more open as a downside, I guess. Uh, this one actually did feature, ironically, uh, the same sword piece that we get, uh, that the official set includes for Breath of the Wild Link. Because remember, at this point, I was still not including a Master Sword, which is crazy. But yeah, he could have that sword to represent the big Oron sword. And then actually, we have the Hylian shield as well, if I can grab it correctly. Uh, but meanwhile, continuing to talk about this figure, uh, he has the similar belt uh, stuff to uh, the Child Link did with the same kind of color combinations and uh, the way the shirt opens, although the shirt is more opened here because of the undershirt. Uh, and then interestingly enough, he does have the dual molded legs with the side leg printing, which is actually for once a lineup between me and the set where we had uh, the tunic going all the way around, the little bit of white for the uh, uh, the stockings or whatever, and then the dual molded boot part being the dual molded boots. For the only figure in set with dual molded legs, I mean, it, it does elevate him an awful lot, but um, this is sort of besides the point because Breath of the Wild Link could have also used it, but then again, it would have just been a moot point. So I, I'm happy with the approach they took, uh, specifically on this character, although I do think that's an interesting use of print budget. Uh, and then here he is re replicating the image on the right. If we put that up, uh, and he's got his fierce expression. So the closest we have to that in the official set is obviously the here. So let's just set that up. Very nice. Yeah, very similar, interesting design language. This is probably, I don't know, Breath of the Wild Zelda is probably the closest because I could have expected a new head mold. Um, and then Ocarina, again, is again very similar to a lot of the design cues, although uh, of course he does come with these pieces in the set. So again, it's another one where it's interestingly overlapped. Actually, if we bring all four in for a second, if we think about the exclusive prints and molds that have been designed for this set, it is kind of clear as to what kind of sets could possibly come next. If we take a look at these two in particular, you could very easily reuse both the heads and the hairs um, on these guys again, and even reuse the Breath of the Wild outfit completely for a Link's final like death scene. Just you've got to make, all you'd have to do is create two new prints for. Oh, actually, you get away with one print and reusing the layer dress uh, for Breath of the Wild Zelda's praying outfit because the face works the same, including the eyes closed for when she saves him. So there's my my lineup for a diorama because you get to reuse. Um, two of the exclusive molds, one, two, three, four of the prints. Uh, you also get to keep the Hylian Shield and then of course the Master Sword as well, making use of a lot of these exclusive elements um, to bring the cost down by just like repeating them in sets again. Uh, if we think about these two, um, yeah, more and more Karina stuff, I guess, is what makes sense here. Just again, because you get to reuse the hairpiece. Uh, you could reuse the torsos, the faces, although the face is kind of redundant because you can reuse it over here, which has much more reuse potential. Because I guess what, if you did an Ocarina, Adult Child Link, whether this be Temple of Time or Long Long Ranch, like I'd suggested, you could reuse the hairpiece, um, the Hylian Shield, the sword, and the ocarina is basically the the extent of the new molds. Whereas on this one, it was two hair pieces and the sword and the shield. So I suppose it's four and four, but you do save more prints this way, I think, because these are. Mm. Anyway, it's iffy. There, there are two options. That's two potential sets. Um, I haven't decided. Lon Lon or. Um, Temp of Time, I think your options here because these are the only, or oh, Castle Town. Anyway, anything where you can change between the two of them or an Ocarina Hyrule Castle because that's obviously very iconic to Smash. Or my preferred option is reuse these and give us the new praying dress to recreate Link's final jewel. Um, I think that's also pretty likely. But a couple last bits then. Let's get them out of the way. Uh, we have the fairies. The fairies are something that I've actually replicated. This is an incredibly smart design because it actually makes them look like they did in game. In my version, since wave one, I've been using the snitch piece from Harry Potter recolored into a variety of transparent colors. One, it's less accurate. Two, it's less versatile because this only requires one piece and then you just have whatever colored circle you have and it actually looks more accurate to the game. So again, um, this is just something that I don't think anyone else other than a Lego designer could have thought of, but it is genius. Uh, and then the most important one to talk about, I suppose, is the Koroks as well. This is again a very big difference. We all knew the Koroks were gonna appear. Again, these actually guys appeared all the way back in uh, this set. Here's a 009 uh, Master of Pedestal. So that's um, a bit interesting. Specifically, this version actually did appear in that set. Um, in a two by one design, meaning that the build was two across uh, and then a couple up and down, but still just one thick. And actually, 
would have used this exact print because it is that version of the Korok. Now, in that version of the set, he didn't have his berries of love or whatever we want to call them, uh, but it is this version of the Korok, so that's again really interesting. The one by one design is so much better scaled um, when it compared to a figure. Like, he's like, please, Mr. Hero, help me. Yeah, that's perfect. Whereas the two by two one comes up to like Link's shoulder and he's just terrifying. And also, the heart is too small. It's actually really amusing to me that on the official artwork for, for this guy, the, or at least the figure version, um, the one I did, uh, he does use the same one by one heart piece because we know it's such a good part for Koroks because of its size. And yet we all know that when I did this um, in the upgrades video, he looked tiny and it looked actually ridiculous on him and it just made no sense at all. So that's interesting. As for the other two, uh, these two have never actually officially appeared in a custom set, although we have had a variety of other Koroks here on the channel. Um, of course, we've used the shield piece, we've used this piece from Elves, we've used a triangle tile, um, yeah, all kinds of crazy solutions. We've gotten pretty close to this guy, again, just using the upside down heart piece with the other expression. And this one is also fairly close, given that we use like, the vertical long face in orange. Um, uh, this piece, again, didn't exist when I was designing these original Koroks. But yeah, this design is so much more succinct, but again, it's another thing that does have a direct comparison to the CSS. So um, here we are to talk about it. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything, though. Everything that, at least in the set covers, um, that I've currently covered in the CSS. Some of it, uh, interestingly enough, will be coming. Like, this Link's Treehouse, uh, which is now not going to fit on the camera. But this thing here um, is actually supposed to appear in a Wave 7 set, I believe, of Link's House. Shockingly. Again, it was supposed to be a gift with purchase. Which is weird, considering... Again, remember, this is all planned, so before the tree. Considering how separate this is and how this feels like a gift with purchase. Which makes that really, really interesting, at least from my perspective. So um, I think that's really curious. Um, but besides that, obviously, we'll see if they do any more sets. There'll be more comparisons to make. And we'll see if uh, one day if we get play sets, how accurate my Wave 1 predictions um, ended up being. Again, not that Wave 1 was supposed to be a prediction. It was most to be supposed to be more of a simulation of what uh, a playset wave could look like. And I think it does that effectively. But I do still think it's interesting that certain elements from that were on the money, such as the Master Sword pedestal and certain parts about the character selection. Even so much as the Deku Tree featuring in wave one with him in the dungeon set and i know it was completely different concepts and technically an accident because i came at it from the dungeon perspective but it was an iconic location with a really iconic boss yeah that's why they changed it into a set here yes because also it had the breath of the wild connection but that's why the ocarina version is here is because it's incredibly iconic to one of the most iconic games of all time yeah Makes sense. But anyway, a whole variety of these exist digitally. If you're interested in any of the custom sets you've seen or any of the others, I'll link those in the play sets below. If you're still watching, consider giving us a subscribe because all we do here is ramble about LEGO Zelda pretty much, although also just some normal LEGO stuff. And I think it's really interesting and I apologize for making you guys look at some really bad art today. But it's all about the concepts, not about the execution. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care now. Bye-bye.